it's just pretty crazy that like a doctor can like assault sexually assault women and then be like protected by the white coat you know He had me put on a gown and it came back in the room and reached up the gown and did a breast exam. Um, and it was not like flat palm, it was um, like grabby. And then he proceeded to do a vaginal exam without any warning. But then I was even more shocked when he proceeded to do a rectal exam without any warning. It was super painful and uh, just like a really aggressive. And then you know, as he was finishing up, he said, well, your husband's a lucky man. Like, I definitely felt violated in the moment, and it felt wrong, but at the same time, I didn't have a lot of experience with OBGYNs or getting exams, obviously. And so, and I also like viewed him as being a man in authority. You know, he's a doctor, he's a male, he's a lot older than me. And so I think I automatically was just like, I must be, I must have misinterpreted or like I should have known that he was going to do a rectal exam. That was my fault that I didn't know. You know, every once in a while, I would like think back to that experience and I looked up his name and read started reading reviews and discovered that like there were other women who had had similar experiences with him hello everyone and welcome to another edition of mormon stories podcast i'm your host dr john delin i thought like well i'm like i should have known that it would include a rectal exam that was my fault that i didn't know that and then, like, I probably just misunderstood his intentions. Like, he was probably just trying to be nice. You know, I was talking to my therapist about it, and she said, you did exactly what the patriarchy conditioned you to do. You just, you know, sit down and shut up. There were just so many women that started comment, both commenting and also sending me private messages and saying like, hey, this happened to me too. And like in the process, it helped me to not feel like I was alone. Initially, the lawsuit started with just, I think, four of us. Um, even though there were a lot more women than that who had experienced it, it was like, let's get, let's get the ball rolling. The judge right from the outset said, like, I want to let you guys know, like, I'm leaning toward calling this medical malpractice. It's stressful talking about it. It's stressful like reliving it. It does help me to have a little faith in the justice system that, you know, now the Supreme Court of Utah is taking on the case and they're interested in looking at it. And hopefully that will like set a better precedent for, for this because we can't be calling sexual assault healthcare. <laughs> 